Hi, Dr. David Lynn, board certified laser dermatologist. Hey, in my previous videos, um, I went through a whole heap of different ways to actually uh, treat acne scars, but right now, for the next couple of months, I'll be focusing on specific methods and specific lasers and ways, including fillers, um, microneedling, subcision, all these different techniques to actually treat acne scars. Today's video, we'll be talking about fully ablative laser resurfacing. Now, before I talk about fully ablative laser resurfacing, Let's talk about all the rage now. So everything nowadays, you can see, everyone's talking about fractional skin resurfacing. Fractional skin resurfacing deals everything from even this, which is basically skin rolling, it's a form of fractionating skin, to even stuff like this, which is dermapen, all the way up to fractional devices, including uh, fractional lasers such as um, Fraxel, Infini, um, fractionated CO2, fractionated erbium, and a whole heap of different wavelengths. So that's fractionation for you. Fractionation was invented about a decade ago, and the reason why people actually fractionate skin is because you heal up faster. But the downside is that you do need many, many more treatments compared to fully ablative laser resurfacing. The advantage of a fully ablative laser resurfacing uh, compared to fractional devices, including uh, fractionated lasers, fractionated uh, microneedling, uh, radio frequency devices, uh, dermapen, even skin rolling, is that with a fully ablative laser resurfacing procedure, most patients will only need one treatment. That's one treatment only. The downside, however, is the recovery time, but also it's technically more challenging. However, in certain subtypes, you can see certain, certain acne scar subtypes, um, this is the laser uh, of choice for me. So um, watch carefully and I'll show you how it's done. So then, how do I know which scars are suitable for total laser resurfacing? So once again, the basics. Remember, it's angle lighting. This person has atrophic scars, rolling scars, tethered scars, and is not a suitable candidate. Besides, she also has um, ethnic skin type, and same with this patient as well. This patient, on the other hand, has tethered and anchored scars. These do very poorly with fully ablative lasers and do well with other procedures. This gentleman, on the other hand, has acne scarring, but it's not actually scarring itself. It's just discoloration. So if we put the angles of light, you can see that these are called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and red scars, and these will settle down. This is ice pick scarring, and uh, it re responds very poorly to laser resurfacing. In fact, uh, laser resurfacing, resurfacing will do nothing to this at all, zero zilch. Um, the treatment of choice is, of course, with TCA cross, and um, the whole idea is to raise the scar and then resurface. This looks like a possible candidate for uh, full resurfacing, but if we use our angles of light, like, like I said once again, if we throw the light from behind, we can, in front we can see that he's got atrophic scars. So it shows that he's got deep atrophic scars, and the, he's not a good candidate for initial uh, laser resurfacing certainly down the track, but these guys do really well with uh, fillers. So when do I use fully ablative lasers? I use fully ablative lasers for box scar scars like this one, shallow pits, enlarged pores, and shallow rolling scars. That's only in skin type one and skin type two like this patient. So you can see this certain scar types. Even with this patient who has lots and lots of scars, they're all on the same plane and she has type one skin. So step one, how do I do it? I mark the scars first, and I can mark it using a um, surgical texter, uh, like I do in this case. So marking gives me an idea of where to go deep first, and then where to actually go shallower later. And that's really important because what I do is I blend things in. So you can see I go deep in the areas which need to go deep, and then after that um, I go beyond the outline of the ink to actually um, blend things through. So you can see this is a gentleman, he's Asian skin type, but you can see how shallow these scars are. These are actually shallowed up from a previous TCA cross procedure. You'll see the before and afters towards the end of the video. Um, another way I mark it is with a laser. So basically I just use the laser as an outline um, and you can see me just using an erbium laser to mark it. So my laser of choice is the Erbium Fully Ablative Laser. I also use a CO2, not in fractional mode, but in fully ablative mode. So the two lasers I use are Fully Ablative, Erbium, and a CO2. Now, the procedure itself um, is, uh, usually takes about half an hour, 
And in this case, I'm using a fully ablative erbium laser. So it's done under partial sedation. We use local anesthetic cream first. We use local anesthetic blocks. Um, and then after that, some sedation. The sedation may include my midazolam together with uh, some uh, pethidine. It's extremely important we uh, make sure that the patient has minimal discomfort. In fact, most patients are so heavily sedated, we use a pulse oximeter. I usually have two nurses helping me with the procedure. Um, so you can see this is fully ablative uh, erbium laser to the spots. But most importantly, you'll see me later, I actually blend the surrounding skin. So here I am actually blending the surrounding skin because you'll see why as we heal up, uh, it's extremely important to blend the skin. So the laser itself is very, very noisy. Uh, that's the erbium laser. The CO2 is much quieter. Uh, you can see me doing some passes over here. Typically, I use a 100 to 200 micron pass. In other words, 100 micron is your entire surface of your skin off. So if I do that four times, it's basically four times the thickness of your skin. So what's the level? What level do I actually stop at? Well, the answer is that um, I chase the scars. So if someone has, um, let's say for example, this gentleman has darker skin type, I don't chase it so deep. And hence, that's why I use procedures such as TCA cross to actually raise the scars first. Well, if someone has lighter skin type, like a Caucasian skin type, I can chase the scars a lot deeper. So you can see once there's bleeding, I'm into the papillary dermis. In other words, I'm into the actual, the, the, the second layer of the skin, um, and I go underneath the scar. So if I can go underneath the scar, I know the scar's gone completely forever for good. That's it, done, dusted. So you can see over here, I've gone underneath all his scars. You'll see later on the before and afters. So how's it here like? This is day one after a fully ablative erbium laser treatment. It's not for, not, not for the faint hearted. This is day four after the laser. After day four, acceleration of healing is, uh, is marked. So in other words, they heal up within day eight or so. However, even at four weeks after a CO2 laser, uh, you can get some redness or skin color changes. This can happen with erbium as well. So what are the before and after treatments like? Here we can see a lady who has um, fair skin, but she has a multitude of different scars. I decided to use an erbium laser and erbium laser only, one treatment. There she is, uh, and the scars are, well, not completely gone, but let's say about 80% improved. And that's with just one laser treatment. Uh, once again, type 1, type 2 skin, fair skin, lots of different scars, one laser treatment only, uh, and there she is. Most of her scars are gone. You can see some slight discoloration, which will fade in time. This is about three months after. Asian lady here, um, and she has very shallow scars. So in her case, I use an erbium laser, one treatment only. I didn't bother around with fractional lasers, one fully ablative erbium laser. Here she is, three months later most of the scars are gone. This lady on the other hand has rolling atrophic scars but she also has box scar scarring which is a skin type 1, in other words fair skin type and instead of going through four or five different fractional laser treatments I decided to treat her with one fully ablative erbium laser coupled with fractional laser in the same procedure. So here, here she is, I mean it's a huge improvement three months down the track. Uh, you can still see a couple of atrophic scars, really, really, really small scars. Super easy to treat with some filler. This gentleman was the um, previous one you saw, which I resurfaced, Asian gentleman. You can see this is a two-step procedure. I initially used TCA cross to actually raise the deep scars, and then I used fully ablative erbium laser. So you can see he still has some scars, but marked improvement. So the first thing to ask is what scars do you have? Are you suitable for fully ablative laser resurfacing? Are you suitable for a one procedure type um, laser procedure? Or are you suitable for a multitude of different treatments, including TCA cross, fillers, subcision, uh, infini, fractional lasers? The whole idea is to actually figure out what type of scars you have and whether you're suited for that. Like I said, the vast majority of patients will have mixed skin types and um, scar types. And the whole idea is to treat the actual scar type to give you the best possible results. So guys, um, you can see there are pros and cons in regards to um, uh, fully ablative laser resurfacing. Uh, it's still a great procedure. It's a very underutilized procedure. Not many uh, plastics, not many dermatologists um, do them still. 
Um, it, I think it's a lost art because uh, it is technically more challenging and also you've got to select the right type of scar type. It's very rare to have patients to have absolutely um, shallow box scar scarring or a certain scar type that's uniform. Usually we have to use many different devices and many different methods to actually treat it. So the one in 20 that come in with that particular scar type, yes, I say, look, let's go for fully ablative laser resurfacing. So once again, remember, it's not about the machine. I'm trying to change that with people's thinking. It's not about the machine. It's always about the method and the scar selection that's actually going to give you the best treatments out there. So, um, hey, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll um, see you next time for more on um, acne scar revision. Bye. For more information on acne scar removal, uh, please subscribe to this channel or um, have a look at the upcoming website due for release in um, late August of 2016. Thanks for that. Bye.